It is a gorgeous day in the Valley of the Sun, and we are happy to report that it's kind of cool by late April standards in Phoenix, Arizona. So cool, in fact, that the roof is open. I can't remember the last time. Welcome, everybody, to Chase Field. The Rockies and Diamondbacks meeting for the first time this year. First of 19. Rockies three here. Day off Thursday in San Diego. That'll stink. And uh, then a three against the Padres <laughs> on the weekend. Charlie Blackman in his customary leadoff spot for the Rockies. He's on base almost 35% of the time. Couple of stolen bases already for Charlie. Here's the rest of the Southwest batting order tonight for Walt Weiss. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Corey Dickerson was out of the lineup yesterday. Of course, that was a rain out. Feeling much better. He's in there tonight to Lewinsky, Morneau, Arenado. Cargo, good numbers in his career against the Diamondbacks as a whole. Michael McHenry has caught Tyler Maxick several times. He's going to do it tonight as well. DJ Lamont Mayhew will bat eight at 419. That is the best mark in all of baseball. And a very good young right-hander, Chase Anderson, out of the University of Oklahoma. And you see right there that he's writing the initials of both his, uh, his late grand parents and also his dad he does that before every start and i'll tell you another story about what he does to honor his dad uh, in a little bit but chase anderson with a 3-0 era is ready to go fastball good curveball and an outstanding changeup. What what's the last guy we had that, that we didn't say had a, didn't have an outstanding changeup lately <laughs> it seems like almost everybody because that's uh, what a lot of the young youth coaches are teaching their players instead of getting them away from the curveball throw me a good changeup. And for, for Chase Anderson, his changeup is very difficult to hit, right at a 222 average. So he'll turn it over. It really fades away from the left-handers, not afraid to use it against the right-handers as well. That's just inside two and one. On his fastball, he'll throw 61% of the time, and it, and it sits at 91, 92 miles an hour. So I already referenced the changeup, and then the curveball just a handful of times during the game. But if he does show it, it's going to be the 12-6 over-the-top variety. That ball is a sinking fastball hit foul, so it's two and two. Chase Anderson out of Wichita Falls, Texas. 3-1 and one in his career with a 3.52 ERA against the Rockies. Came up last year in May. And it seemed like every so, time the Rockies played the Diamondbacks, one of the games was thrown by Chase Anderson. 3-1, yeah, and one, as you said, at 3.52 ERA in those four starts. And he gets him with a fastball at 92. So a strikeout of Charlie Blackman for Chase Anderson. Here's the Diamondbacks defensively tonight. In the outfield, Ender Inciarte in left field. A.J. Pollock in center. Mark Trumbo is in right field. Yasmani Tomas trying to find a position for the young Cuban player. He's at third base. Nick Ahmed, Chris Owings, Paul Goldschmidt, Tuffy Goeswish behind the plate. Diamondbacks were swept over the weekend here by the Pittsburgh Pirates. They were outscored 14-2 in that series. The Rockies have won three of their last four. Dickerson takes a strike on the inside corner. It's nice to see Corey back in the lineup today. Uh, we talked to him briefly last night when we landed, said the leg was feeling better, but you did—you never know until you come out, you take some early batting practice, run around, does it tighten back up on you? Well, you and I kind of had an inkling that he felt good because he was in the second hitting group, and when he came in from shagging fly balls in the outfield, his pants had grass stains all over him. <laughs> to, to, to the point before we talked to him, I remarked to you, I said, did, they, did he not clean it? Well, he doesn't clean his unit. Did he right. like grab a dirty pair of pants? <laughs> and so we asked him, he said, no, I slid out there stopping a ball, slid trying to make a catch. So, you know, if he's doing that, warming up, he feels good. Yeah, because you're not going to test it that much if you didn't feel confident in it. That, so I say, okay, I can go out there, I can slide, I can make different cuts, different movement. And, and know it's going to hold up and not hinder me when I when I start the game. Here's the one two. It's a curveball and he stayed right on it and drilled it back up the middle. So a one out single for Corey Dickerson. And this is why he was out of the lineup yesterday. This happened Saturday. He 
fouls a ball off his quad. I, I've never seen a guy I, foul a ball off a leg not, that high. No, it's usually down lower. And he said, I knew it was going to be a cut fastball inside. I knew it was going to happen. And the ball was in, but I swung anyway because I was looking for it. And that's how he fouled it off his back leg. So here's Troy. Boy, he absolutely crushed the baseball against Arizona last year. The problem was he only got to play him eight games. Well, the last 30 games he's been crushing it. I mean, Troy likes hitting here. You see the average, the home runs, the RBIs, and the just gaudy slugging percentage. Yep. He had four home runs in eight games last year against Arizona pitching. Here's the 1 0. And that's way in 2 0. You know how it works in the National League West. There are three pitcher ballparks, extreme pitcher ballparks, all on the West Coast. And then there are two really good offensive parks, clearly Coors Field. And Chase Field is one of the better offensive parks in baseball. Well, and I think it's a better offensive park when the roof is open and they have the windows open leading out of the park. That's in there, two and one. 85 degrees. Last night when you and I went out to dinner, it, it was cool. I mean, it was Relative cold, but rel yeah. relatively, but it was very pleasant. And, and right now, folks, it's really pleasant. That's the only reason the roof's open. Yeah, and you can see those big windows next to the to the scoreboard out in center field. The wind will come in and then shoot back out of those. It's 85 degrees, and, and I cannot, I was being serious, Honestly, I can't yeah. remember, can you, the last time no. we came here and the roof was open? No, I, I, I'll, I'll bet you dinner right now, when we come back in July, it won't even get, the low won't even get down to 85. You can bet Dougie, I'm not <laughs> taking that bet. <laughs> 2 1, that catches the outside corner as well, so it's 2 and 2. Right at the bottom of the strike zone, according to Mike Winters. Mike behind the plate, Mark Wegner at first, Marty Foster at second, Mike Malinsky's at third. Rockies won the season series last year against Arizona 10 to 9. Didn't fare too well here, though. Good swing by Troy. Four weather facts. Just a slight breeze, not much of a wind. I like the way they have a, a roof hotline that you can call to ask if, or see if it's going to be open during the game. Whether or not you would have a sweater, dress. right? Sure. This ball filed back over our heads into the top deck. So the Rockies finished up that homestand at three and three, obviously getting rained out yesterday against the Giants. It'll be made up at a later date. And I like how the Rockies finished because they had two disappointing losses, obviously the blowout loss against the Padres on Monday, and then they rebounded against a really good yes. San Diego club, won the last two, beat the Giants on Friday night before losing in extra innings on Saturday, five to four. Rockies won their first six road games this season. And then they landed in L.A. And the Dodgers had Kershaw and Granke and the well, now injured Brandon McCarthy going. Yeah, not only that, the ERA was higher in those, those three losses. Inside, three and two on Tulowitzki. So the Rockies' first six games, they hit close to 300 on the road, scored five runs a game. Great team ERA. And then in L.A., they, they didn't score much, and the Dodgers swung the bats very well. See if they put Corey in motion with a 3-2 count. I would. He's going, and this one's fouled off again. I mean, bad quad, bad foot, and all to try to stay out of a, a double play. This is the ninth pitch of this at bat for Troy. It's still not 
running as fast or as hard as he would like, but he's given it all he has. And it, it hurts more when you start to slow down. When you when you get to that full speed, that's okay, but it's the slowing down that it, that that foot starts to react. Fastball away. And this is fouled off. Troy's going to call timeout and get a snack. He's been up there so long. At least a sip of water. It's like the home run derby where the guy runs, <laughs> yeah, out, runs gives out, gives out there, gives him a towel, a dry towel, <laughs> water, drink. Dickerson moving again and again. It's fouled off. Now they might have to take the water and towel out to Corey. Exactly. This will be the 20th pitch of the inning for Chase Anderson, and, and there's one out, one on. Tulowitzki's the third batter. Let's see if the fourth time's a charm, starting the runner. There he goes, and it's fouled off again. Come on back, Corey. <laughs> Corey's like, wait. I know we're here in Phoenix, and this is our spring training area, but I don't feel like doing these wind sprints. The fourth strike zone. Next pitch will be number 12 to Tula. That'll skew the old pitches seen per plate of appearance yes. here in the early going. Not too many change-ups in all of those. No. Corey off, and this one is fouled off again. Did you ever have one of those at bats like this, where, and you and you actually felt like I got some pitches I should put in play, and you get frustrated because yes. you don't know why you're fat, why you're just missing them? Right, but then you also sit there and say, "Well, I'm getting all these pitches, I'm seeing them great," and this is where you have a tendency to expand the strike zone because you're seeing the ball, you think you can foul everything off or put it in play. When it when it, but it, I always think it, it factors the hitter when it gets this many pitches into an at bat. The advantage it's hitter. Advantage hitter, yes. Dickerson running wind sprints between first and second, not going here. Ball four. So Corey now will take advantage of that, and he will actually walk. He just started to jog <laughs> now. He literally was walking to second base. Now he goes into the slow jog. First and second. Justin Morno up. Morno had a good home stand. Eight for 19. 421 clip. He's raised his average to uh, 279. After that, at bat from Troy, see if Justin will ambush. This first fastball he sees. Jump on it. No shift by the Diamondbacks and straight up in the outfield. A lot of teams don't shift against Morneau because he does use the whole field. I've seen him hit it to the other other way quite often. He went breaking ball, strike one. It's fan uh, it's not fan Friday, it's a it's a Monday, so I have to reroute myself on this read send us uh, your thoughts comments and photos using the hashtag Toyota talk that's Toyota talk we do it every night this ball crushed deep right field take a good look you won't see it for long thankfully three run home run Justin Morneau, great start for the Rockies here in the top of the first against Chase Anderson. And what pitch did he ambush? That fastball, the first one that he saw. Boy, off the bat, this had the loud sound. You thought it was going to be 12, 14 rows deep. 
inside down got the hips through it out into the bullpen area in right center Nolan Arenado fouls off the first pitch she sees. Well, Justin was telling us a story during batting practice today about a buddy that he had played ball with back in Canada that came to Kansas City and saw his first home run. Remember that? Yes. And then he said, he's here tonight. This is back up the middle. Shaded in that direction was Owings, and he's going to steal a base hit from Arenado. Two outs. Yeah, he has his three buddies down from the Vancouver area that uh, he knew growing up. One of them, I think he said, played in South Alabama, played baseball in South Alabama. They're down here on a golf trip, coinciding with uh, their buddy's visit with the Rockies. And their dad and, and Justin's dad, they used to coach against each other. Well, he gave him, gave him something to, uh, sure. to remember and tell some stories going back home. Here's Cargo. Cargo lays down a bunt foul. Right idea. And the what the Diamondbacks did is different because they moved Tomas, their third baseman, over to the second base side and left the shortstop to field on the left side of the diamond. Yeah, and, and I think that has a lot to do with who the guy is. I mean, Arenado's fine over there, but right. Tomas still trying to find his way as a third baseman to be kind. That's a very nice way to put it because he's not the not quite major league caliber at third. Oh two change ups in the dirt one and two. Cargo showing signs the last uh, couple of ball games of extricating himself from that slump well, that's few, lasted about ten days. Yeah, a few line drives to left a bullet home run to center field. And he got him on another change up so. Cargo goes down, but a three-run home run in the first from Justin Morneau. And the Rockies have an early lead against the Diamondbacks. Three nothing lead on Arizona. Ender Enciarte who's hitting 450 against left-handed pitching. 319 overall will lead things off for Chip Hale. Southwest batting order for the new skipper of the Diamondbacks, taking over for Kirk Gibson. AJ Pollock will bat second. One of the best hitters in the game, Paul Goldschmidt third. Then Trumbo, Tomas, Chris Owings. Last six games, he's really swung it well. Tuffy Goeswitch out of Arizona State, Nick Ahmed out of UConn, and Chase Anderson. First pitch of the ball game is in there, strike one from Tyler Matzik, and we look at Matzik's numbers this year. Yeah, you look at it, the 1-0, 240 ERA. The one weakness would be the 10 walks that he has, just the 10 strikeouts, and part of that is he's only retired the leadoff batter 44% of the time on the league average. It's at 69 
But that being said, when he's needed to make a pitch, he's done it. He's gotten out of those jams. Very similar to what Eddie Butler's sure. done. Well, the good news is he's quickly ahead of NC Art Day 0 and 2. And he goes fastball just off the plate at 93. Already you see on the first two or three pitches good downhill playing from the fastball getting the hand out of the glove in time There's a slider and it's off to Tulowitzki on the move he got him just in time. It's the art they can fly One out AJ Pollock will take his turn here the Rockies defense blitz Dickerson black the cargo in the outfield it's the all gold glove infield of Arenado to Lewinsky, LeMahieu, and Morneau. Michael McHenry doing the catching tonight. He was scheduled to go yesterday in the game that was rained out. I really like what Walt Walsh White did. Instead of, you know, now sitting McHenry for another few days, he said, no, you're going to go tonight. Well, and these two pair up so well together. And I'm talking about Tyler and Michael because they had the history last year down in AAA before they came to the big leagues. Michael caught him quite a bit. So if you're going to play Michael once or twice a week, why not just continue to pair him up with Tyler? We talk about, you know, a personal catcher. How about a personal pitcher for, for Mike? And that's going to be Tyler Matson. That's the same pitch. Wasn't called a strike, and now it is <laughs> one and two. He's to your point. He's hitting his locations early with his fastball, and he really hasn't had good command of it in his first three starts. Right. He's thrown more sliders than he has fastballs. But notice how quick that hand's coming out of the glove to get on top, allowing it, his arm time to catch up. In the air to shallow right center. And Charlie calls it and makes the catch. Two gone. And a lot of things that Tyler worked on this this winter was perfecting the slider. And you can see the fastball usage because of it has, it has gone down. He's not using it as much, but it's more effective. So he's, he's able to cut the fastball into the right-handers to keep them honest, not thinking leaning out over the plate. The few left-handers there, he'll throw it to them, but then it helps with the slider. That slider makes it much more difficult to hit. Fastball cuts onto the inside corner for a strike to Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt just one for nine. Several walks in that series against the Pirates. That ball's pulled for a base hit. Pirates held the Diamondbacks to just three hits yesterday. Francisco Liriano was a starting pitcher, and the Bucks outscored the Pirates 14-2 over the weekend. Well, and you see the one extra base hit for Arizona. The last time they had an extra base hit was Friday night in the fourth inning. That's how long it's been. And the uh, poor hitting has really extended for about a week. Over their last seven games, they've hit just 204. Trumbo at the plate. Dangerous bat. He gets a breaking ball. It's 0 and 1. He's hit only one home run. This is a guy that's hit 29 plus on three different occasions. Last year he crushed the ball against the Rockies. Well, six home runs, 16 RBIs against Colorado last year. Six of his 14. He was. Hurt last year, like so many Diamondbacks and so many Rockies. And two out of the top five teams as far as games missed yep, in all the, of baseball. Along with the Texas Rangers, those were the top three. One and one on Trumbo. Goldschmidt at first, good speed. Sliders inside. <laughs> Rockies up 3 nothing on a three run first inning home run by Justin Morneau. And that's 
that's fouled out of play. Who wants tacos? When the Rockies score seven or more, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Lip Moss at Taco Bell. Thirty pitches, by the way, in that first inning for Chase Anderson. This will be the 16th for Matzik. Runner going, and the throw by McHenry is not going to get Goldschmidt. That's the fourth stolen base for Goldschmidt. He's probably the best running first baseman in baseball. Well, 50th career stolen base for Goldschmidt has not been caught this year. People know he's going to run, but he picks his spots extremely well. I mean, you, you look at him and you think, well, this big, big guy, he's not going to be able to steal bases. He can. Three and two on Trumbo. Slider and he didn't bite, so it's ball four. And now they're two on for Yasmani Tomas. Oh, the big free agent sign out of Cuba for Arizona this winter. In his debut just a few a week or so ago, two weeks. Six years, $68.5 million. Which I think is I think it's a half a million dollars, if I'm not incorrect, more than Jose Abreu got with the White Sox. Well, and, and Abreu immediately went out and performed. He he threw up huge numbers. And he's off to another good start this year. Yes, and, but Tomas has not. Started the year in the minor leagues, trying to figure out a position for him to play. Is it going to be third base, first base? They got Goldschmidt there. Tried him out in the outfield, and with Jake Lamb being hurt, they said, you're back at third. This ball line toward left center field. Blackman will get there. Great running catch by Charlie Blackman. That saved at least one, perhaps two. Rockies have a 3 nothing lead as we go to the second. Off. Huey was talking about how maybe Matzik is the personal pitcher for McHenry instead of personal catcher. When well, you go back to last year, Matzik has made 35 career starts, including tonight, and McHenry has called him 23 times. So, yeah, they do have that understanding. And McHenry told me today, it was here early, he took early BP, guys. He feels like he's close to being locked in at the plate. He had a three-hit game earlier in the year. Let's see how he swings it here tonight. All right, Mark, thank you. 3 nothing Rockies. McHenry, LeMahieu, and Matzik in the first pitch is down low from Chase Anderson. 30 pitch first inning for Anderson. Tulowitzki was up there for like 10 <laughs> minutes before drawing a walk. 
And then the three run home run from Justin Morneau on the second pitch of that at bat. Well, and that's why if you would look at the 32 pitches he saw, 23 of them were for strikes, but how many foul balls were there? Now if you can push him to the 18 to 20 pitches this inning, it's that's a huge number just after two. Henry was saying before the ball game, like so many hitters, he likes to hit at Chase Field. It's a real dark background, not just the batter's eye, but everything out there is dark, which really has to help a hitter. You pick up the ball immediately out of the hand. The other thing that helps is the grass is real short. It's a very fast infield. There, so there's one exception, as you know, to that. They water down. They water the heck out of the front yes. area of the dirt. And I'm telling you, I, I was kidding. We, we were sitting with, uh, before the game, with Stu Cole. And I said, Stu, do you have any toys we can play in the sandbox <laughs> in front of the plate? Yeah, that's the only area. If you, the ball hits on the grass and then shoots out, it's, it's like it's playing lightning. on con yeah, concrete. It's just lightning fast. And I even tried to throw some diamond dry in there to dry that out. I mean, it's a mosh pit. Yeah. You can see by how big the divots are on a, on a couple of balls that have already hit there. Bring in some monster trucks and have a nice little truck pull there. There's a thought. Yeah, so if it hits in there, it wouldn't be a Baltimore chop. Or what would it be? A, a mud bog? It, it, it'd be a, <laughs> It'd be splat. Curveball misses. Three and two. Good eye from... Mike Anderson works quickly 27 year old 6 1 195 pounds and this ball is a towering fly ball down the line in deep and and Ciarte makes the catch he almost overran that baseball makes the catch in foul ground So DJ coming up. I want to finish that story on Chase Anderson. His parents got divorced when he was growing up, and he lived with his father from 12 years old on, and they were very, very close. His father had a landscaping business. They would cut together about 75 lawns a week, and then in the winter uh, he worked with him as well. And, you know, they shared the love of baseball. He goes off to junior college and then on to uh, Oklahoma, and then he came back home. That winter before uh, pro ball, and they got to spend a lot of quality time. And a couple of years ago, he visited him. His dad came and visited him in spring training. And before he left, he said a line to him. He said, if ever something happens to me, you're the man. You know what to do. Don't feel sorry for me and keep working hard and understand the things I've taught you. One week later, he died all of a sudden oh. of a heart attack. And it was devastating, obviously, to Chase. And now, in his home starts, he picks out what his dad, one of his favorite outfits, is an old pair of blue jeans. This ball lined by LeMahieu toward the gap in right center. It's cut off there by Pollock, and DJ will have another hit. That'll raise that beautiful 419 average. He, wear, he, he loved pink polo shirts. He wears a pink polo shirt. Where's a big uh, belt, belt buckle yeah. that has an A on it for Anderson. Uh, Wrangler and jeans. Wrangler jeans. And his, his boots were, his favorite boots were these ostrich boots. Tony Lama ostrich boots. And he wears his dad's, that outfit, to every home start. He says it's a little cumbersome to bring on the road. So at least 15 times a year, he's going to wear that when he uh, drives to the ballpark. And I mean, that's, a, that's the way he can honor his father now. Yep. Runner going, and the throw to second gets DJ. So Tuffy Goeswish throws out DJ LeMayhew. Second caught stealing for DJ this year. Tuffy three for 11, throwing out base runners. And look at that. Base hit up the middle for a guy hitting 500, Tyler Matzik. So the Rockies first time through get four hits against Anderson. And Charlie Blackman, who struck out, 
we'll get another look at Anderson. I was just watching Tyler talk to EY at first base, and I wonder if that was a missed hit and run sign on that steal from DJ. What's your best guess? I think it was a missed hit and run. Way inside. 43 pitches, by the way. First time through the lineup for Anderson. Yeah, here's the conversation. You, you wouldn't be having that if it was just, hey, nice job on the base hit. Way to hit the ball. Yeah. That seemed a little more private than yes. that. Let me hold your batting gloves. 2 0 on Blackman. Charlie's reached in 17 of 18 games this year. Rockies at 10 and 8. The Diamondbacks at 8 and 10. Good numbers career wise for Chuck Nasty against Arizona. The slide to the pull side on the 2 0, and this is back up the middle. Matzik picks up Stu Cole, and Stu puts his hand up. He says, You're not, you're not advancing. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold Stay it. there. You're pitching tonight. Well, the Rockies stay in center, stay in well, the middle of the diamond so far. Yeah, and that works on any ballpark. Doesn't matter where you're going to play. Hitters, ballpark, pitchers. If you stayed center, right center to left center, you're going to have a lot of success. Well, the Rockies having so much success that Mike Harkey wants to go out and visit with Chase. This is more of the encouraging. Well, we mentioned that Chip Hale has taken over. As the manager, Chip was here on the coaching staff previously, and he's kept some guys, and he's hired some uh, some of his buddies from around the game, if you will. Turner Ward's the hitting coach. Mark Grace is the assistant hitting coach. Well, and then Turner was the assistant prior to becoming the head guy. Former Cardinal. He was with Tony La Russa forever. Dave McKay's at first base. Andy Green, who played briefly with Arizona's at third. Glenn Sherlock's a holdover. He's on the bench. And of course, Mel Stottlemyre yeah. Jr., a long history with Arizona. Gracie getting his feet wet on the coaching side. Did a little bit down in the minor leagues last year in, in rookie ball. Well, if he's going to talk hitting, I'd uh, be yeah. all ears. Yeah, we played together in 2000 with the Cubs. We talked hitting a lot. And that misses on Dickerson. Corey hit a line single on a curveball right up the middle. Three straight singles for the Rockies. LeMahieu, Matzik, and Blackman. Rockies up 3-0. Five knocks already. Dickerson, same spot. Now Matzik's going to get a green light here. And Pollock... Had trouble getting it out of his glove, and now they have Dickerson hung up. He's out, but the run did score. So Matson comes around on the base hit by Corey Dickerson, and it's 4 0. 8 3 4 on that put out.
stores, let's go places, and by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. This first trip down to the desert is always interesting because we seem like we just uh, left here. And uh, that actually was the case a couple weeks ago down here, finishing up spring training in Scottsdale. Tyler Matzik ready to go in that second inning. It's also time for the Lowe's Never Stop Improving stat. Check this out as Tyler grows up at the big league level. First 13 starts, 2 and 9, 538 ERA. Opposition hit close to 290 against the Blast 9. A little different story, Huey. 5-2, 178. And this is amazing. Two or fewer earned runs allowed in nine straight starts. Well, and the ERA will put him at the top of the list starting from last to the end of last August through now. Is, I mean, you're talking about a lot of different guys on that list. So Tyler's making a name for himself. He talked to scouts, and they say, I just like the way he handles himself out on the mound. Chris Owings takes a strike at the knees. Good fastball location so far tonight for Tyler Matzik. He's got good bite on his slider as well. 23-year-old second baseman Chris Owings takes outside one and one. Well, this is what you were alluding to. Best ERA since August 25th of last year in baseball starting pitchers. Look at this. Dallas Keuchel has been great. Volquez. Take a look at it again. You know what? This is drifted in. toward the stands, but it'll stay in. So uh, you can hear Ewan tell him that ball's going to. You're all right. You're all right. There's a lot of room in foul territory here at Chase Field. So Morneau makes a catch. Go back to that graphic. Francisco Liriano, who threw here yesterday. Adam Wainwright, a shame for the Cardinals and Wainwright. He's now out for the season with that tear of the Achilles tendon. And then Tyler Matzik, uh -huh. a 178. How many people would have thought that? No, and these are top end, front end of the rotation type of pitchers. Of course, Wainwright, we know about him. Lariano pitched well yesterday here. Dallas Keuchel was the opening day starter for the Astros. And, and Dallas Keuchel, I think, is going tonight. Dallas Keuchel's 3 0 for Houston. Here's Tuffy goes with it's always. Outside two and up. It's always comforting when you're going towards your own dugout. Listen to this. Right there, right there. All right, all right. You don't have to worry about anything other than your buddies and your coaches helping you, saying you're okay. You got enough room. Keep your eye on the ball. There's EY. Actually, you know who's going tonight? Colin McHugh's oh, three yes. and oh. Keuchel's not going tonight, but Keuchel's off to another good start. Outside corner, good looking fastball. A lot more fastballs tonight. Well, get back to that. I mean, that will help the, the finish on the slider, but you have to command the fastball in this league. It's the bottom line. See if he goes slider here, 2 2. Nope, he got him to chase on a fastball at 94. And that is the first strikeout tonight for Tyler. Two outs. Nick Ahmed will come up. And. Last year versus this year, fastball usage. Because you're getting more movement on it. It's not as straight. It'll run. He also has figured out how to cut the fastball. So last year, 2014, the opponent's average against the fastball, 345. This year, just a 188. Also, the slugging percentage has gone down from 568 last year to 375 this year because he's not putting it in play. But the one Thing that we noted earlier so far this year he's thrown his fastball just 33 percent of the time 55 percent of the time last year slider better than 41 percent of the time he, this year he was commanding the slider better it, so that's that why he got, he, he, exactly he, he was got away from it his slider he was throwing more frequently for strikes in fact behind in the count he'd thrown his slider 47 percent of the time and a 64% strike rate with the slider, which was much higher, at least coming into tonight, than his fastball. So he felt more comfortable and, and would even also shake off to a slider. Not tonight. He's got good life on his fastball. Here's the 1-1. And that looked like uh, almost a little like a curveball. But or maybe a slip out of the hand. Yeah. Probably better described uh, that way. 2-1 and one on Ahmed, who's won for his last 22 at the plate. I fly ball down the right field line and cargo is going to run out of room right in that corner. Right out of the glove 
for Tyler and the changeup. The three fingers on, the other one's making the circle right around the seams. Just pull on that and, and let it release. Almost looked like he threw it too hard, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he left that one up and, and didn't, didn't have that 10 miles an hour off of it. Two and two count with two outs, nobody on. Four nothing Colorado in the second. See, See ya later at 94. Back to back strikeouts. Matzik's on his game early in the Rockies offense. Four runs on six early hits. Drive into the car you love Saturday. 1 1 game. Troy Tulowitzki towering home run to left. Give the Rockies a 2 to 1 advantage. Unfortunately, the Rockies would lose in 11 5 to 4. Tulo's second of the year. And guess who's coming to the plate now? Troy will lead it off, then Morno and Arenado. 4 0 Colorado. A shift on the left side for Arizona with Troy at the plate. He had a lengthy at bat, to say the least, his first time up and drew a walk. 13 pitch at bat. Curveball misses. And, and this is what the Ford strike zone looked like. I mean, it. Just all over the map. Down, up, out, and away. Inside. All the kids in the stands were happy. <laughs> Everybody got a baseball. In fact, some of the kids got two. Like trying to shoot the into the clown's mouth with the, with the water gun at the carnival. When you miss off to the side, then you finally get it right. <laughs> so you win the teddy bear. Kind of figured Mark Teixeira would be the uh, American League Player of the Week. He homered about every other at bat last week. 2-0. That's a home run if they move the foul pole quickly. Like 150 <laughs> feet. Well, the field was round. Not going to happen. I don't think those people thought they'd get a foul ball that hard. They thought they might get one up high, but not on the line. 2-1. Outside with the heater, and it's 3-1 on Troy. On the outside corner at the knees, three and two. Troy, Nolan, and actually Cargo as well, all hitting better on the road so far this year than they're hitting at Coors Field. And I look at it, you know they're going to hit at Coors Field. I look at that as a great early sign about how the Rockies are going to do on the road. 
This ball's in the air to right center field, and A.J. Pollock is going to get over and make the catch one out. Well, Justin Morneau, on the second pitch he saw from Chase Anderson, did this in the first. A three-run home run, 240th home run of Justin's career. He's starting to get locked in after a real productive homestand. Well, this is where he also will beat that shift when they have it so pronounced to the right side that he'll he'll wait for his pitch to hit it to left field. I, I mean, sometimes he'll power through it, but other times he'll say, well, if you're going to give it to me, I'll, I'll hit it over there. This ball's chopped to the only guy left <laughs> on the uh, left side, and that is the shortstop. Ahmed, two outs. Well, join the big leagues by signing up for the Rockies Rookies Kids Fan Club. It's open to kids 15 and under. Get discounted Rockies tickets, access to members only events, and more. The Rockies Rookies the Kids Fan Club. Rockies made an announcement about an hour or so ago that that game that was rained out yesterday has been rescheduled. The day night doubleheader on May 23rd when the Giants are in town. So is the first game still at two? That's down low. The first game will be reg at its regularly scheduled time, 2:10, and then the uh, nightcap will be at 7:10. Fouled off. And tickets from yesterday's game are valid for the 7:10 game on May 23rd. But separate tickets. Separate tickets, okay. yes. One one that's I'd have to rub up a couple more dozen baseballs by the fifth I'm telling you plays with a zest for the game and uncommon passion. One two and that's line to center field Pollock is there though. And it's a 1 2 3 inning, the first of the game for Chase Anderson. Middle of three, the Rockies up 4 zip in Phoenix. up in Colorado as we go to the bottom of the third nine one and two for Arizona there's a guy who's a great pitcher Dave Stewart Chip Hale takes over so a, a, a new look Arizona club this year Jeremy Hellickson Yasmani Tomas we mentioned Ruby uh, De La Rosa the key additions they lost Montero in that trade to Chicago Didi Gregorius to New York so Arizona kind of in transition 
and they got off to a nice start but they have struggled the last several days. Here's the 1 0 to Anderson and that's a strike one and one with Chip Hale one of six new big league managers this year. Houston Texas Minnesota Tampa Bay the Cubs. Walt Weiss and Dave Stewart were teammates for six years in Oakland. I know Walt has a great respect for Dave Stewart. That's outside three and one. Whoa. Oh. That's not what you wanted to do. Nope. So after great command the first inning, and here comes well, Tulowitzki immediately. A bad walk of Chase Anderson. Tulo came sprinting in on Matson. That was a smart move from Troy to come in and say, okay, enough. Don't lose your focus. You have a 4 0 lead. But now it's up to Tyler to get back on track. Twenty four year old. Ender and Ciarte and the slider for a strike. And that's his go to pitch when he starts spraying the fastball. And Ciarte say wait I was thinking about bunting and you throw a slider and started at my at my right shoulder. And another one this could be too tough to double up in Ciarte unless you throw like Troy Tulowitz. Well and get rid of it like DJ LeMayhew. Watch the transfer folks on this ball from DJ to Troy how it, it he doesn't catch it. He just redirects it. Now watch DJ's hands. He doesn't it doesn't go all the way into his glove. He just redirects it to his to his hand. That allows Troy to show off the arm and throw out Enciarte by a step. So the walk not nearly as painful AJ Pollock has to hop out of the way. AJ at a Notre Dame by way of Connecticut. Did you know that? I did not. Connecticut kid. In fact, he was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Connecticut his senior year. That's how you get recruited by the Irish. Slider, first strike, one and one. And he became only the second player in the history of Notre Dame to lead the Irish in hitting three straight years. With every challenge called the Subaru eyesight review will determine the outcome love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. For zip Colorado here's the one two on Pollock and that is chopped toward the Arizona dugout. Oh, that sliders got sharp bite to it tonight doesn't it and you don't realize where it's going or how sharp it is until you start your swing and then midway through your swing you're just saying oh I hope I can foul this off because I know I'm not going to hit it hard heater away see you later turned out to be a very strong inning for Matzik after the walk to Chase Anderson for nothing Colorado we're off to the fourth in the desert.
Who was on the hill? Randy Jones? <laughs> 158, Jenny? You kidding me? Mark Burley? Yeah, really. Josh Fogg? Cargo's going to lead it off in the fourth inning. He struck out his first time on a changeup, and that was a cross-up. That or it was one of the <laughs> ugliest uh, receptions of a pitch I've seen in a while by uh, Tuffy Gozwich. Yeah, just turn the glove over, throw it away out of the zone. I'm good. I caught it. I don't know how you get crossed up with nobody on base, but that was ugly. Let's just say it wouldn't make the Tom Romanski videos. No. Does he still make those? I, they were playing the ones from 90, <laughs> you know, back to back to back. National champions, they were, it was 91, 92, 93, so I don't know. Cargo getting a steady dose of change-ups, and that's another change-up, and it's one and two. That's what he struck him out on. A lot of teams pitching cargo backwards. And what we mean by well, that is going soft early in the count. Well, and until you make that commitment to sit on something, they'll they'll keep doing it. He did it again there. That's four straight changeups, two and two. And it just makes you know a 90, 91 mile an hour fastball that much quicker, right? It seems like it's 95 to 97. Shift on. 2-2. Two, two. He went change up. No, excuse me. I'm looking at that was a fastball. Do you see guys catch that? Brandon yes. McCarthy out for the year. Torn UCL. He's going to have Tommy John surgery, and he was off to a really good start. Well, a change up, and Cargo waited and waited, and he ends up burning a walk. So speed aboard to begin the fourth inning. Mike McHenry coming up. Friday after the ball game. Make sure you join us on Rockies Real Time. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Coors Field from the construction and evolution of the park to the biggest moments that have happened on the field. We'll take a look at everything that has made Coors Field the best ballpark in the big leagues Friday after the game. Again, right on, right here on Root Sports, Rockies Real Time. Make sure you catch that. A lot of folks put a lot of work into that. And I think well, you're really going to enjoy it. And folks, I know you you don't have the, the the opportunity like we do to go see a lot of different ballparks. I'm telling you what, Coors Field looks as good today as it did 20 years ago. And I'm not just saying that. It, it Kevin Kahn, the rest of the people there, they work incredibly hard to keep that stadium immaculate. It's really amazing. 21 seasons now, and it looks as if it just opened up. This is slowly hit to short. Mike's got to get up the line, and he beats the return throw. Well, it wasn't hit particularly hard to Nick, and then by the time he threw the ball over to Chris Owings, Carlos was right on top of him and had to lift his feet out of the ground to make the throw, causing the throw to go high. Yep, Cargo did a good job getting into Chris Owings. DJ lined a base hit to right center field to move his 419 average up 10 points to 429. One of two guys in baseball hitting over 400 starting the day. The other, Adam Jones, the uh, star of the Baltimore Orioles. D. Gordon in a new uniform off to a good start. How many bun hits do you think he has so far? <laughs> More than might Adrian be, Gonzalez, be. who's next on that list. I guess he might have 10 bun bases. He hits. could. DJ's got to back yeah. out. There's that clock in your head that says, wait, this is too much time. I need to step out. You know, when the clock in the announcer's head <laughs> saying, Dude, you've been <laughs> standing there like a statue for a while. Call time. Well, Dougie looked it up. D. Gordon has only two bunt hits. You think he's a uh, power hitter now? Maybe the new ballpark doesn't feel like he needs to. That's why we bring Dougie along just to keep us in line, don't you? You like that. Well, surprised by that the two bunt hits obviously chase anderson deeply concerned about mike McHenry at first who was the co-leader in stolen bases on the club well, with two. Maybe, well maybe he's more concerned that he has to throw to dj 
and he's afraid of what's going to happen if he throws him a strike. Having fun with Mike before the ball game, saying, "Man, you got to keep that lead." Stolen bases. He has two this year. He hadn't had a stolen base since 2012 prior to this season. That's a goal. Just make sure you fill up every column before the end of the year. Think he wise any of his <laughs> records are in jeopardy? No. Shoot, EY stole six in one game. I'm not sure Michael will get to six in the season. Don't sell him short. This ball smoked to second. That'll be a double kill. That's a 4 6 3 turn. And we are done with the top of the fourth inning. Middle of four in Phoenix. The Rockies lead the Diamondbacks 4 0. The all-new Ford F-150. It's not just a truck. It's the future of tough. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. Pretty night in the desert. We are in downtown Phoenix, Arizona with my partner Jeff Houston, the Arizona native. I'm Drew Goodman. Mark Stout is with us as well. Doug Marino, our crack research statistician Tyler Matzik here and he's pitching well Paul Goldschmidt will lead it off the three hole hitter for Arizona then Mark Trumbo Yasmani Tomas Goldschmidt a two out single in the first well this is where you want to see Goldschmidt there's a couple guys in this lineup that you don't want to see with men on on base Goldschmidt is number one Trumbo is number two yep Goldschmidt is last 17 against the Rockies only hitting 439 hit it the wrong place though that's something we don't often talk about we always talk about the ability to get to baseballs how soft the hands are for Nolan Arenado he has one of the strongest left side arms especially third base arms in the game and where he fielded this ball was just on the line and then the defense from his last series I mean you can go write a, a, a highlight reel package now of everything he accomplished the one down the line and the spin throw and how many highlight real plays has he made just here in the month of april enough to secure that third goal glove yeah they've already made that they've yep. already put his name on it yep mark trumbo here's the 1-0 that's down hits the plate at the backstop, 2 0. Trumbo with the Angels hit 95 home runs between 2011 and 2013, which was the fifth best total in baseball. With Arizona, he's hit just 15 in 104 games. He's battled some injuries. 
Slider misses 3 0 on Trumbo. Fair. No one could get that. And Dickerson will have to wait for it to carry him out of the corner. It's a double. Just the second extra base hit for the Arizona Diamondbacks in their last four ball games. And it came in the fourth inning on Friday night. Tonight it's the fourth inning. And this was a rocket down the line. It's a big, strong guy. Well, it is. And not much going on with the lower half. Put, picks the leg up, but then gets it back down into place and rips it past Nolan. Nolan should have had it. <laughs> Yasmani Tomas hit the ball well his first time up with two men on a line drive toward left center. Good running catch by Charlie Blackman. Initially I thought it was going to be a I gap. Too. And that fastball's down low. Jenny did a little piece on the Mets winning. They're now 10 games over 515 and 5. We're reminded how the game isn't played on paper. We knew the Mets would be good. We figured they'd be good with that young pitching staff. How about the Nationals? They lost again tonight. They lost to Atlanta. They are 7 and 13. Now, again, it's just 20 games in. You play 162, and they have a great pitching staff. They seemingly have a good offense on paper. They've played very poor defense so far. 7 and 13 in the cellar in that end at least. Already eight games back. And I know it's April. And you can make them up. Oh, sure. But it's. But eight games. You, maybe th it was going to be flip flop. That the Mets might be four or five games back. Not eight, but four or five games back from Washington. And Atlanta, surprisingly, is 10 and 9. Miami got off to the. Slow start. They had a five game winning streak snapped tonight by the Mets. Now it's three and one. Slider three and two. I'd throw him another slider. He did, and he goes fastball, and he beat him with it. But Tomas able to foul it off. Past Dave McKay, the first base coach. These are the fun, fun games you play between pitcher and hitter. Guess which pitch is coming and what I'm going to throw. He went slider right at Nolan and he'll look Trumbo <laughs> back and throw out Tomas. And that was textbook looking a base runner back. I mean, he came up and gave him the head and shoulders fake like a point guard basketball and then went the other way. Okay, the smash, one hop, he gets it. Watch the head fake. I'm going to throw. No, I'm not. Get back to the bag and I'll throw it across the diamond. Trouble, what do I do? Yeah, that's it. There's no, there's no way you could get a secondary lead and then advance to third base on the fake that Nolan had. Two gone. Trumbo at second, and Chris Owings, who fouled out to Morneau, is at the plate. Supplemental number one pick in 2009. And this is a high fly ball toward Cargo in right center. He's got it, and Matzik works out of the inning. A one out double by Trumbo, and then they started hitting the ball in the third baseman. Four nothing, Colorado.
pitcher is going to hit. You may have heard that Adam Wainwright, the Cardinals ace, injured his Achilles out for the year. Hitting Max Scherzer, the ace for the Nationals, said maybe the DH should be in the National League. Well, I asked Jordan Lyles, one of the Rockies' better hitting pitchers, about that. He's been doing it since he was a kid going to the plate. Every day you went out there and pitched, you were hitting somewhere in the lineup growing up. Um, so I, I like being more part of the game. Um, I feel like I'm more into it besides uh, going out there to the mound and then coming back and sitting down until the rest of my teammates get done hitting. So Drew and Huey, Matzik's up. You got to hit his first time up. DH in the National League. Conversation was inevitable. Um, I'm going to start with you, Jeff. <laughs> Your thoughts on the DH moving into this league no. like it is in the AL? No, 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 no. I don't want it. I like I like the the, the idea of, of the pitcher hitting. I think it adds a different dynamic to the game. I, I just, maybe I grew up that way. Yeah. I, I've, I've always been a National League guy just, as far as that goes. Just another reason I love you. I am in lockstep. With okay, you. perfect. This is to short. I, I mean, you couldn't can, agree more. Yeah, I love Wayne the Wright strategy could've... of the National League. I love the chess match between the two managers. Yes. And it it sets the American League apart. And I'm not so much of a traditionalist that I balked when they went to a wild card and then a second wild card. I think it's been great for the game. But in this case, yeah. W would you be better served to have a sure. you know, legitimate position player batting ninth? And it's what makes the American League different from the National League. I like that it's different, and I love the strategy in the National League. I asked Christian Bergman today, and he looked at me and said, take it out of the AL, too. I'm with that, too. Yeah. I, I, I did, part of me says, well, let's just have one set of rules. Well, I'm okay with it. It's been there forever. First of all, as you know, as a former uh, player rep, it, it, it's never going to happen. <laughs> the DH is happen. typically a big salaried guys. Yes. Uh, I'm okay with the way it works that the American League's a little different. I like the fact that you know you go to American League Park and you have the DH. I, I think perhaps they should tinker with that and the National League fans should see the Flip DH off. and the American League fans see the strategy uh, of having a pitcher in there yes. and so on and how to utilize a bullpen. Yeah, I like that thought too because yeah. then, then it kind of shows everybody the difference between the two leagues. But my thing is the National League, so much more strategy. You have the double switch, when to take the pitcher out, is he hitting? I mean, in the American League, it, it pretty much comes down once you make your lineup is when do you take the pitcher out and that's it. Two outs, nobody on. Corey Dickerson coming up. Check some of our tweets on Toyota Talk. Adam Wainwright scheduled for sur thir excuse me for surgery on Thursday. Tommy John surgery. Excuse no. me, not Tommy John. I'm thinking of Brandon McCarthy. Let me correct that. Adam Wainwright tore his Achilles. Recovery is nine to twelve months. But he, for an Achilles tendon tear. And it's awful because he's the, one of the top players in the game, one of the top pitchers. But he could have he could have done that. that Trying to feel the, the ground ball. To go to first base, to cover first base. Yep. And if Scherzer didn't like it, then he should have stayed in the American League. If he didn't want to hit, stay over there. No, I, I love the nightly strategy sessions and how you utilize your bullpen, whether or not you can stay with your starting pitcher when you go offense and utilize your bench. I mean, a lot of guys, and you, Huey, you played in both leagues. Big swing and a foul ball. You know, some American League bench players, they might hey. not play for seven, ten days. My longest was 12, 12 days, 12 games. I did not see the field. That's crazy. Yes. And then they ask you to go play defense or I, whatever. You haven't right. been in a game in two weeks? Right. It's hard go, to do, right? Go get them. In the National League, you feel like every night you have a chance to play. One ball, one strike. Dickerson, two singles tonight. Remember the last time Corey was dinged up? He came back and he had, what, a three-hit game? Yes. Some guys... <laughs> It doesn't matter. Your wrist could be hurting, your leg, your foot, your toe. You put that all out of your mind when you step in the box and all you're thinking about, I need to square this ball up. I need to hit it hard somewhere. Wow. 
Well, Chase Anderson with two strikeouts, so one, two, three, fifth inning. Middle of five, Rockies 4 0 over Arizona. of the week that was with the highlights, interviews, and behind the scenes footage of your Colorado Rockies. That's tuned in uh, each Sunday after the game for Rockies Weekly. Seven, eight, nine, and the slider just a little bit too high for Tuffy Goeswitch. This is a, an important sequence, I think. Fifth inning, Rockies were up 4 nothing. Anderson settled in a little bit. Did that hit him? Wow. That was a big miss. <laughs> in the, and you're in the bottom third of that order. You can get a 1-2-3 inning, and now you kind of move to the latter stages of this game before you have to deal with the, you know, the top of the lineup. Well, and, and then what are they going to do with Anderson? Are they even going to hit him? In the bottom half. National League ballpark. Right. National League gonna, teams, right? You're going to go to the bullpen. But Matzik, who for the most part has had good command, though he's had in the last couple of innings he's 3-0 counts. See if he can fight his way back. I know you're probably at home and, and you didn't pitch, Jeff, and you're saying, how does he miss that badly <laughs> three straight pitches? And then he goes, okay, I need a strike. And well, he throws it right down the middle at 91. To be honest with you, I've said that out in the field sometimes. Goes which walks leading off the fifth inning. Second, check it, third walk allowed by Matzik. News and notes as we go around the big leagues. We talked about Adam Wainwright out for the year. Uh, Chris Archer is not allowed to run his last four starts. That's quite a performance over the last few weeks for the Tampa Bay right hander. And Josh Hamilton, the trade was finalized. I saw his press conference. He said it's good to be back home as he referenced uh, being in Arlington. And for the Rangers, they're picking up evidently just $2 million per year on what's left of what was an $80 million. Well, $80 million was left on that contract. $68 million being picked up by the Rangers to rid themselves of Josh picked Hamilton. Picked up by the Angels. Right. Yeah. $68 million picked up by the Angels to, to rid themselves of just Josh Hamilton. What's your thought on yeah, first all of, of all, that? First of all, I mean... I, I see why the Angels did it. Artie Moreno, when he came out and said, he, there's no way that Josh could go back there after what he had to say. Um, obviously, Josh has some demons that that he needed the help. He needs help. and then, But maybe going back to Texas gives him that comfort level to help him just go out and play. Yeah, I, I you know, wish him well personally. He has, and that's a great way to describe it, Hugh, he has demons, and, and you hope he gets well. 
I also understand the Angels' perspective. This is up the middle, and it's passed to Lewitsky. And Nick Ahmed, which is the second hit in his last 24 at bats, he got a slider 0 2. So now they're two on. And now the decision's easy. You keep Chase Anderson in and ask him to bunt. Well, Coca Cola value packs are back for the 2015 season. They're available every value game, including May 4th through the 6th, against these same Arizona Diamondbacks for either $59 or $79, depending on your seat location. Everybody's discussing how they're going to play this bunt, what's going on. Nolan will give the signs directing everybody if he's going to charge, who has the third base line. Well, you look for, for Tyler to break hard over to the line, and if it's a soft bunt, he'll get it. If it's a harder bunt, Nolan will have to field it. It's hard one and you get the double play Right back to the mound, but you got to go to first Good jump off second by the catcher goes which So Anderson does his job second and third one out at the top of the order with Ender and Ciarte coming up This is clearly the Diamondbacks chance to get back in this game They have not been very good with runners in scoring position this year, or just lately, anyway. Well, they have a string right now of 20 consecutive scoreless innings, and Matzik will be hard-pressed to keep it that way. With just one out, the infield's back naturally with a 4-0 lead. And Ciarte's hit it on the ground twice. And a great block by McHenry on a slider. You know, coming into this ballgame, Matzik and Chase Anderson had come up to the big leagues and made their debuts within a month of each other. And their most of their statistics were, were nearly identical in terms of batting average against, ERA. One of the differences, here's the 1-0. Good slider, not called a strike, though, by Mike Winters, 2-0. One of the differences is because of the number of walks, for Matzik, his whip walks and hits per inning pitch was much higher. Well, Tyler's whip coming into the game was 153. And Chase Anderson's was 111. And, and that belies a, a 1-8 ERA, which Matzik had coming in. And it's much lower right now after four shutout innings. Diamondbacks four for their last 50. With runners in scoring position, two and one. And a wave and a nasty slider, it's two and two. Boy, a punch out here would be huge. Enciarte was completely fooled on this pitch. I mean, trying to reach by sticking the backside out to so get more length on the bat, spinning out of his swing. See if he reaches back for a fastball here. Nope, he went slider again. Couldn't get him to offer it that one, and it's three and two. It's the Art Day 0 for 8 career wise against Matzik. Pollock on deck. Slider on the ground is short. That'll get a run home. So the drought is over for Arizona. Their first run in nearly 21 innings. It's four to one. Seventh RBI for the leadoff man in Ciarte. Ahmed to third. And that'll bring up A.J. Pollock. He went back to the slider, but just left it up. Just enough for Enciarte to put it in play. That's done. You have two outs. And Pollock up. Pollock a fly ball to center and a strikeout. Back up the middle. DJ, can he throw him out? Safe. Wow. Bang, 
bang at first. I know Brian Jones will be taking a look at that underneath. Well, that's what they're going to wait for. But the range from DJ back up the middle to even get to this ball and then come up and throw. Watch how far he is. By the time he stops his momentum, he is on the other side of second base. Ball in the glove. I think he's out. I think he's under. He's out. They're going to take a look at this. I think you're right. How about this? Also, the stretch from Justin. The ball, and it's when the ball goes in the glove and disappears. Talking about a huge challenge here. Keep a run off the board and get to the dugout. Time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody can use a second set of eyes. It's funny because they're now showing it on the big screen here, and, and there's like a smattering of applause. And he's out. Yeah, he's he out. Is. Remember, it doesn't. It's not when it's completely in the glove because right there, foot still in the air. He's out. Other angle gives you the, the yeah, better view. You can't view. see the foot. You can't see uh, Pollock's foot there. I mean, it's real close, but. But the foot's still in yeah, the air. Yeah, the foot's in the air there. Clearly, the foot is in the air. Be an interesting angle. Ball and glove. Now watch the bag. Ball and glove. Bag is contacted. Here they come. Safe. Oh, wow. wow. Are you kidding me? I can't believe that. I can't either. So an infield single for Pollock, and that's huge. The ruling in favor of the Diamondbacks, and instead of four to one, and the Rockies are coming up, it's four to two, and you have Goldschmidt, the tying run at the plate. This is key for Matzik now, not to, you know, lose his composure. No, because he had almost two minutes in between the, that video replay to sit there and wonder, well, do I have to make another pitch or am I going back to the dugout? Pollock's a runner. He's got four stolen bases. I don't know how wise it would be to run here with their best hitter at the plate. With the left hander on the mound. I still think he's out. Now, one of the things Major League Baseball does this year is they send out an email to among others the broadcasters that we'll get in a short time runners going and it's a base hit so Pollock's going to get the third nope he stopped at second he took a big wide turn Goldschmidt another base hit they're two on for Trumbo they'll send out an email clarifying why they came up with the decision they did can't wait for that one You know, I think to me they're, they're probably going to say that and there's a guess that they could inconclusive inconclusive you know the old NFL thing <laughs> it has to be overwhelming evidence to 
me, it looked like his foot was still hovering above the bag when that ball went in the glove. Mark Trumbo, a walk and a double. Pretty good cheer. Let's get ready to Trumbo. Somebody yelled out of the crowd here at Chase Field. Let's hope not. 4 2 Colorado. Got him to chase a slider. Christian Bergman. Well, that's just in case. He's just getting loose enough because he's only at 77 pitches. Really good pitch. Two strike and count on Trumbo. Because of the late break on it, but also where it was located. And Mac holding it for the home plate up for Mike Winters to make the call. Two outs, two on. Here's the 0-2. In the air to Cargo. Plenty of room. And he makes the catch. In the inning, a couple of runs for Arizona on three hits and a walk. 4-2 to two ball game off to the sixth. Morno three run home run. Last three innings, they've gone in order against Chase Anderson. So they'll try to reboot the offense in a four to two ball game. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Staff from Chase Field. First of three between the Rockies and Diamondbacks. Tulowitzki, Morno, Arenado, three, four, and five in Colorado's lineup. Rockies, two games above 500, beginning this six game road trip that will also take them to San Diego. Six and three this year on the road so far. Last 22 between the Rockies and Arizona. Dead even. 11 wins for the Rockies, 11 wins for Arizona. And the 
stats are very similar. Both teams have struggled on the hill. Both teams have ERAs above seven out of the bullpen over those 22 ball games. Both teams hitting close to 300 against each other over the last 22. Tulo takes low. It's one ball, one strike. Troy with 11 extra base hits. It's 21 pitches for Troy seen in these first two plus at bats. And that's bounce foul. Rockies are second in all of baseball in extra base hits. First in doubles. And Troy's got nine uh -oh. of those. Uh -oh. uh, this could, we could have an issue uh -oh. here. Actually, don't pull it back that way. Help him. There we go. <laughs> I thought we were going to have a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. That is hit hard down the right field line. Could be another double for Troy. It will be. That's number 10 for Tulowitzki. And that's how you beat the shift. I mean, well, Paul, Paul Goldsmith was was way over into the three and a half hole. You were middle infielder, man. You always say this. If you're going to put a shift on, you got to pitch to it. That was high right. and away. Yeah, so what did Troy do? He took it that way. And that's the, that's the best thing. If you're not going to pitch to the shift and you're going to pitch him away, then hit it away. So the Rockies have more no at the plate. Tulu at second, nobody out. Trying to counter punch here in the top of the sixth after Arizona got two, and that's a base hit to center field. Oh, wow. Hit so hard that Troy will have to stop at third. The old line, you get a hung laundry on that rope because that ball was scalded. That ball was dented. I mean, the bat might be flat because he hit it so hard. Ahmed dives. Not sure what he was diving for other than air. First and third, Mike Harkey coming out again. Tonight's game changer brought to you by T Mobile. First inning, two on. Second pitch of the at bat to Justin Morno, and he got most of it. Three run home run for Justin, his second home run of the year. Career home run, 240. And the Rockies were off to a flying start. From our friend Eric Christensen. <laughs> Morneau must have got some good advice from fellow Canadian. Number 33, Larry Walker around this weekend. So Nolan, a ground ball to second and a fly ball to center. Something you could drive. Cargo's on deck. And now is when Chase Anderson, when he's when he starts to get in trouble, he goes to the soft change up and the curveballs. Fastballs would be just for show. He got a fastball up. Good swing by Nolan. Well, Tulo at third. Started the inning with a double. He has 10 doubles in the month of April. It's the 10th time a Rocky has reached that plateau before the end of April. The most ever, Dante had 12, along with Preston Wilson and Todd Hollinsworth. So uh, three guys shared that April record in doubles. Troy's got a chance. It's uh, April 27th. This ball's well hit to center field. Pollock going back, way back, will get there. And Troy could literally walk home with the Rockies' fifth run. Outstanding at bat for Arenado, his 12th RBI. He got well, a pitch he could lift. Yeah, and then he answered the two runs that Arizona scored in, in the bottom half of the fifth inning. He didn't get overly aggressive, just stay centered, put the ball in the air, and, and hit the sack fly. And Chip Hale's coming out. That's going to be that, all. And that's not an easy pitch to hit to center field, down and in. 
Most of the time you want to try to pull that ball, but Nolan kept his hands inside the baseball. I'll tell you what, if you're Blake Doyle, you have to be thrilled, Walt Weiss as well, with the Rockies approach tonight. So many hard hit balls right in the middle of the diamond. Here's Blake on the left. So Cargo will wait on the pitching change. 5-2 Colorado. Chase Anderson's evening is done. One out in the sixth. Singled a couple of hitters ago. Nolan Arenado just drove in a row with a long sack fly. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The promo code's ROCKSWIN. Go to PapaJohns.com. Oliver Perez takes over. The veteran left-hander, former starter with the San Diego Padres, got to the big leagues at a young age, and he has really become one of the better left-handed relievers in the National League. Certainly he was last year, off to kind of a slower start this year. Well, last year he see career highs and holds and appearances and as, as well as strikeouts. Well, no. la last year, this is righties. Now, obviously, there's a lefty at the plate. He held righties to a 184 average last year. He averaged almost 12 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. That's over 1,300 strikeouts in his career. Way inside on cargo. Perez will vary his windup too, which throws your timing off. But since moving to a, a more of a relief role than trying to start, he's just a two picks pitch pitcher, fastball slider. You remember when he came up, he oh. threw really hard. I mean, 95 with some wild arms and legs thrown at you. That's low, gets away for a moment. No advancement, two and one. Uh, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in true HD. You get real-time highlights, live look-ins, and more. There are some restrictions and blackouts to apply, but visit MLB.TV for details. Good at bat going by Cargo. It's three and one. He walked his last time up, struck out in the first on a changeup. Tulo got this rally started with a hard double down the right field line. Morneau followed with a single. And then the long drive to center, corralled by Pollock off the bat of Arenado. To get the Rockies fifth run in. Ball four. So Perez called upon to get Gonzalez, the left handed hitter, ends up walking him. And That'll those are good signs. If you're, again, if you're, you know, Blake. 
Guff, you're looking in, Blake Doyle, and you're looking in, you're saying, those are good walks. Two of them tonight. We remember with Chase Anderson, he left off all the change up, and then he sees Perez and he lets those go. And now you'll see Randall Delgado come in from the bullpen. Another pitching change, 5-2 Colorado. Underneath the stadium, also. Well, in the fifth inning, with two outs, DJ LeMay, who makes a great play on AJ Pollock, and it's bang bang at first, runner on third, obviously scoring, only if there's a safe call. Now, there was a safe call. They reviewed it, looked at it for a few minutes in New York, and it was upheld. And the note we get from Major League Baseball, the replay official, you know, has to definitely determine whether or not the ball is secured in the back of the glove before the runner's foot touches the base and they couldn't conclusively make that statement is that the ball has to be in the back of the glove and I mean, that is, I know that it, is it, why they upheld the call on the field, which probably, had he been called out, that probably would have been sure, upheld also. Sure, I, I understand it has to be on the interior part of the glove is what they like to say, but when can you determine when that actually hits the interior part of the glove? I mean, there's another fine line. When, it, when, your, when your wrist bends... Or, or maybe when you see the glove, you know, obviously absorb the, the baseball. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, the, it's listen, we make, you know, we have fun with it. It's not easy to no. sit there and, and determine that. But that's why officially the runner, the, the call was upheld. Two strikes on McHenry, and he fouls this off. I would just like to see the way they do it in the NFL. Once he takes a headset off that he had a microphone and could just let us all know what happened right then. And maybe that, listen, it evolved from last year. Uh -huh. there, there have been some subtle changes this year. And I'm sure we'll cons continue to see an evolution on how it's presented to the fans in the stadium and the folks at home. Randall Delgado misses high, one and two. Don't get me wrong. I like the way we at least get an explanation this year compared to what we got last year, which was nothing. Yeah, I think, you know, again, that that's, uh, you know, good for Major League Baseball there. This was a huge change, a huge undertaking. is in the air to shallow center. Pollock calling for it to make the catch. Two outs. And that'll bring up LeMayhew, who has been 
outstanding in every facet of the game so far. But how about this one? Two out, runners in scoring position. He has seven RBIs, seven two-out RBIs, which is among the best in baseball. And oh, by the way, he's hitting 588 <laughs> with runners in scoring position overall. Todd Frazier's the leader with nine. Daney was the National League Player of the Week. He has eight. DJ Sharp, sharp single to right center, and he hit a ball hard, but right at the second baseman turned into a 4 6 3. Delgado misses with the breaking ball, and it's 2 0. Oh. Ninth appearance for Randall Delgado, a former starter who's, like Oliver Perez, pitched better as a reliever. The top relievers in strikeouts per innings pitched a year ago. Still rush the fastball up at 95 miles per hour. 2 0. DJ naturally on a 2 0 count, looking for that heavy heater got a breaking ball again and it's two and one well this guy's locked in leads baseball and hitting three and one you know Delgado you know he doesn't want to load the bases he does have the pitching. luxury of the pitcher on deck Tyler Matzik that's why you've seen back to back change ups. Might even see a, a third one in a row. He did. That was a change up, and it's three and two. But Tyler was on that. Or, excuse me, uh, DJ was on that. He's all season long have been good with runners in scoring position three for four as you saw tonight And he misses ball four that'll load it up for Matzik and Matzik's not one of those automatic outs of pitchers Smoked a single to center his first time up bounced to short his second plate appearance and Tyler can help his own cause here with the bases loaded in two outs Charlie giving him a little instruction Is there way as he's waiting to go get into the box Telling him that he's got a fastball he'll turn the change up over on you but Look for a pitch early Gives you the first fastball. Take a swing at it. He did. Hornos at third, Cargo at second, LeMahieu at first. Strikes on Matzik. And this ball pulled toward the hole. And a good play by the second baseman, Owings. That was an outstanding play by Chris Owings. It saved two runs. Good job by Matzik to get it in play. Rockies get a run. It's 5-2.
go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Rockies leading the Diamondbacks 5-2. to two. They've out hit Arizona 8-5. to five. Morneau in the first inning, a three-run home run. Arizona finally got on the board last inning. They had a scoreless drought of 20 innings. That was started by the Pittsburgh Pirates pitching staff. Tyler Matzik, three walks. Other than that, he's been pretty sharp. And in all likelihood, this would be his last inning of work. You'd like it to be uh, quick and efficient. He's at 79 pitches. It'll be Osmani Tomas, who's hit the ball hard twice against him with no results. Chris Owings and Tuffy Goeswitch, 5, 6, and 7 in the Arizona batting order. Tomas, a line drive to center field. Good running catch by Blackman. And a sharp ground ball at Nolan Arenado. Five two Rockies in the sixth. And we've seen that from Matzik the last couple innings. Yeah. Bad misses. Yeah, and, and that's why right now Michael's going out there. Come on. Uh oh, they're calling the trainer out. This isn't good. Because immediately he when when Michael went out there, he motioned to the dugout, calling for Keith Duggar. That's it. Uh, he's pointing out of the back of his leg, and it looks like he's favoring a little bit. He was pointing to his hamstring. Finish that pitch. Let's call Michael out, calling the trainer. Looks like halfway through that delivery, he tried to get off the back leg and not push off. So Matzik, one pitch into the sixth inning, has to leave. It'll be Brooks Brown coming on. 5-2 Colorado. Tyler Matzik has to leave with what appeared to be a hamstring injury. Brooks Brown will make his 10th appearance, and now is as good a time as any to tell you about the roster move earlier today. In case you missed this, Adam Adabino with triceps inflammation.
was placed on the 15-day disabled list. He had an MRI earlier today. They were hoping to have the results back uh, before the end of the evening. Jorge Rondon, a hard throw and right hand of the Rockies, picked off waivers from St. Louis in the offseason, has been pitching well at Albuquerque. He is now part of the Rockies' bullpen. So your bullpen has Bergman, Rondon, Brown is in there, Ober, Bet, Court, Axford, the two lefties, Friedrich and Logan. So Axford becomes your closer on most nights. And you'll most likely uh, here you see Boone, yeah. Boone Logan and Raphael Betcourt in that eighth inning role. Well, and that's what's nice to have the luxury and some depth when you have Axford, 118 career saves in his his career. Of course, we know what Betcourt has done in the Rockies uniform. You never like to see your pitcher go out in this situation. The good news on the short term, at least, is you have Thursday off. So you just have two and a half games to get through um, before you start back again on Friday. Brooks Brown had been warming up prior to this inning starting anyway. So he, it's not going to take him very long to get ready. In fact, he just motioned and said, I'm good to go. But you will miss Adam. And since he's moving into that closures role and what he has done, Heard run average. His whip was low. His name of the closer on the 15th, and he was three for three in saves. So hard throw, and Brooks Brown is in there. And it's a 1 0 count on Tomas. On the outside corner for strike two and one. Final line on Chase Anderson. He goes five and a third. He gives up five runs, all of them earned eight hits, a walk, and four strikeouts. Well, Another strike. Paint. That is just paint. And if you're wondering, you keep score at home, you say, is this Brooks Brown's guy or is this Tyler Matzik guy? With a 1-0 count, it's Brooks Brown's guy. So the book's closed on Matzik. He goes five innings, two runs, five hits, three walks, three strikeouts. It's notable because it's now the 10th straight start that Matzik has allowed two earned runs or less. So Brown walks Yasmani Tomas. And we'll check in with Mark Stout. Stouter? Hey, guys, talking about Adam Adovino, I got a chance to talk to him today in the clubhouse. And just listen to his tone of voice when talking about this triceps inflammation. I mean, I can't discern anything. I, nothing feels worse than any other time in my career. I've had plenty of times where I thought my arm hurt. And it's been nothing. I, I can't say this is particularly different. I don't know. He is just frustrated. He wants to know the results of that MRI that you mentioned, Drew. We may know that later tonight, maybe tomorrow. The MRI was earlier today here at Scottsdale. He said he spent 26 minutes in the MRI tube. He knew it to the, to the minute, so he's ready to find out. He was on the DL once in the minors in 2011, once in the majors in 2010, but that wasn't the tricep steal, so a little bit different. And he also added, Mark, and in, in, I know you conversed with him for a while, that that misses one and one. He doesn't want this thing to be lingering all year where he, you yeah. know, where he's, he's battling it. You he know, doesn't want to pitch to a appearance. game and then be off for two and, and to have it just be up in the air whether he can even appear in the game. He does not want that to happen. He said he doesn't want to play that game within the game. Well, make sure you all stick around to the Toyota Post Game Show. No guarantee, but a possibility Walt will have the information at that point. And maybe if it was later in the season and it's August and you're trying to get to the end of the season, you do it. But here sitting on the 27th of April, why not make sure right now before you get too far down the road? Brown ahead of Owings, one and two. How did he not swing at that? Here's what Adovino's done so far and why it's a, you know, a huge blow, at least in the short term. Ten in the third inning. He hasn't given up a run. Heck, the league has three hits against him. That, that's how you get an 094 batting average. 
13 strikeouts. He's been as good as anybody in the game. 2-2. And that's a base hit. And now Arizona has two men on, nobody out in the sixth inning. Catcher Tuffy goes which well, fans of Colorado Rockies home run for the homeless 5k is this Sunday May 3rd go to Rockies.com slash 5k for information and to register See if Brooks can get a ground ball here Pitch and it's second and third. Well, it was set up for the double play because you have the catcher hitting slower runner. Instead, it's second and third, and it hits in that dirt we were referencing back in the first and second inning, where it's really a, just a, a, a mosh pit out in front of home plate. I mean, Michael doesn't know how that ball is going to go. Is it going to bounce up, stay low? And it kicked off to the side, and you can still see the discoloration between the, the different types of dirt that they have there in front of home. Boy, that's a dirty changeup right there. And the first couple he had overthrown. This one, he just yanked down like you're pulling it down. Let it come out of the side of your hand and let the natural friction of the hand reduce the, the speed of the baseball. Another one. One and two. If you wanted videos on how to throw a change up the last two or what you would watch. If you're going to throw a third one, don't make it any better than the other ones. Throw it the same. He went for it, and it was blocked by McHenry. Two and two. Five two Rockies second and third for Arizona in their half of the sixth inning nobody out. Two two slider off the plate. Ground to third, and now coming home, the runner is safe. Wow, that was interesting by Tomas. He waited till Arenado got rid of the baseball and challenged Morneau's good throw, good swipe tag. But he scores to make it five to three. Well, and, and Justin got rid of the ball to throw it home. But the new rules where you have to give the, the the base runner a lane to slide in played here so as he goes back to the bag I'm talking about Tomas when he went back to the bag Nolan let go of the ball and then he broke home Nick Ahmed one out Owen still at second base Off the plate. And then the slide reaching with a, that's a classic hook slide where you you slide out and reach back to the plate with your left foot. Instead of the reach back with the hand, he did it with his toe. 
2 and 0. Oh. For the moment, Randall Delgado's in the on deck circle. That's for show. Show Evan Marshall is throwing now. Yeah, David. They're not even going to show it anymore. They're going to put somebody <laughs> else in the on deck circle. Well, David Peralta. Well, it's not going to affect anything because Chip Hale can look down at the Rockies bullpen. There's nobody up. Right. It's a, so he can already tip his hand on what he wants to do. They do have the switch hitter, Cliff Pennington, but Peralta a better hitter than Pennington. Two one on a med. And oh, that's wow. high. Three and one. Close. It didn't look high. That yeah, didn't look high on the Ford strike zone. I mean, this came across right at the belt. It was well received <laughs> by McHenry. <laughs> that was, he just missed it. Yep, Mike Winters missed that one. Three and one. Big pitch there. Fly ball to shallow right. DJ going out. And two are gone. So David Peralta will pinch hit. Word from the Rockies clubhouse, left hamstring cramp for Tyler Matson. And as I've been told many times by several trainers, a cramp is a form of a strain. Right. And if you're wondering, we, we looked at the replay as he was running down the line. It did, did not appear that he heard it then. He didn't pull up. He didn't grimace. Didn't do anything. So it happened on the first pitch the next inning. Peralta, dangerous hitter, takes a change up low. Peralta had a very good year in 2014 for Arizona. Not in the starting lineup tonight because Matzik, the left-hander, started. Rockies put three on the right side. And Peralta smokes it, but there's Morno. He'll run to the back, and Brown gets out of it, giving up only one. So it's five to three as we go to the seventh inning. Good play by Justin Morno. Go to the top of the seventh inning. The Rockies 
We'll have the top of the order. Time for the century link link to what's next. Our pitching matchup tomorrow. Kyle Kendrick will have the baseball for the fifth time. And one of the top prospects in baseball who's off to an amazing start. Archie Bradley will have it for the Diamondbacks. Big right hander has allowed just a handful of hits so far in his first three starts. It's Kendrick and Bradley tomorrow right here on Root Sport. Same time, pregame show. At 6 o'clock local, 7 o'clock back home. Evan Marshall will be the fourth pitcher utilized tonight by Chip Hale. Charlie Blackman's one for three. And he takes strike one. Marshall so good a year ago out of the Diamondback pen. They say his fastball's been up and he's been getting hit hard so far this year. Well, and his fastball, it's 94 to 96, but it's straight. So if you leave it up, it's going to get hit hard. Last year, his rookie year had a lot of holes, 19, in fact, which was second in the National League. And that is ripped to right. A good start. Blackman with a single. Dickerson's got a couple hits. That was the Rockies' ninth hit of the ball game. Marshall trying to freeze Blackman. Well, he has to do that. He, is, he has a higher leg kick. A slower delivery time to the plate. Decent lead from Charlie at first. Another subtle thing you can look for if you're as a base runner at first base and a pitcher, you know, how far are their feet apart? Sometimes if they're going to throw home, they might be closer together, further apart. All the little subtleties if a pitcher's going to change his routine. Fastball at 94 is low. Rockies six of nine as a team trying to swipe a base. Charlie has two of those six. Mike McHenry surprisingly has two of the uh, six. And it's two and oh. The other guys with stolen bases. Drew Stubbs has one. And DJ LeMahieu has one. Dickerson third in the league in slugging. It helps when you have five home runs. And that's tied for third in the National League, sixth in all of baseball. Those five. Paul Goldsmith also has five. He's also got a triple and three doubles. Here's the 2-0. New Britain won again tonight, 13 and excuse me, 13 to six. They're now 12 and six on the season. Trevor Story is one of the top prospects in the Rockies organization. Three more hits tonight, three for four, five ribbies. So he had a couple of home runs. Ten out of their last 11. He's hitting 397. Tough night in Albuquerque for John Gray. Three and two thirds. He gave up. Seven runs, all of them earn. Ten hits. He has a he has an ERA yeah. of 1070 here in the early going. So hopefully, uh, John gets it turned, turned around. around 
two one. Three and one. Tulo's on deck. Zach Wilson is here now, and he was telling me before the game that he was over at the the extended spring game today. They were the, the extended spring Rockies beat the Brewers extended spring team. That game's going on still. Yeah, Max George with the triple off the wall. Way to go, Max. Yep, at a Regis High School. Good looking young player. And that's a base hit. Third hit of the night for Dickerson. Blackman thought about going first to third and then shut it down. So two on for Tulowitzki. Well, that's smart by Charlie to shut it down at second base. You got Troy coming up. And then A.J. Pollock charges hard on this baseball, but Corey Dickerson, it's nice when you hit that ball right out of the box. You know it's a base hit, runner in front of you. It's your third hit for the night. And he did it the right way, Huey, as you well know, because in a perfect world you draw a throw, which then there's a possibility uh, of an errant throw. Right. And then he gets away from the third baseman. Everybody moves up. The Rockies ran themselves out of an inning back in the second with Troy coming up. This time, don't do that. Second, first, and second, nobody out. And for Troy, his last at bat said, Okay, you want to pitch me away in the sixth inning? Give me a fastball up. I'll hit it that way. And if you're saying, wait a second, where's Goldschmidt, the first <laughs> baseman? Isn't that normally where he plays? Well, they had a shift on, three on the left side, and Goldschmidt was, you know, 40 feet off the bag. And became a easy double for Troy, his 10th, here to begin the season. Troy has scored a couple runs tonight. He had a walk back in the first inning after a 13 pitch at bat. So there's there's the Goldsmiths, defense. Yeah, he's on an island by himself on the right side. Playing straight up. That's a, a one hopper to him. There's a strike. And ooh, because it looked like it caught Mike Winters underneath the throat of the of his mask. And yeah, fortunately, those masks extend down. Think back to Steve Yeager, years and years ago, the Dodger catcher. He kind of invented that because he took a, a well, piece and, of a broken bat in the neck. And Mike's is broken. That neck guard is hanging down. That one side is broken. Two strike count on Troy. Sliders off the plate. One and two. On the ground to third, and Tomas wide of the bag. Did he stay on it? No, they said he stayed on it. Goldschmidt had a toe on it. So it is a double play. Good job by Goldschmidt to keep his foot on the bag, evidently. And if anybody was going to have a replay, it was going to be Troy. The way he was running, he's going to be able to see. Did he come off and then get the toe back on? Yep. Yeah, he's on. He he's kept on the, the back. toe on. Two outs are going to walk Morno and go right on right with Arenado. Be careful what you wish for. Morno tonight 
three run home run ground ball to short and a single. Studying that matchup. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Arenado one for two. In a short career against Evan Marshall. So you passed on Morneau yep. to go to a guy who's hitting 500 <laughs> against you. Well, we talked about the two out RBIs from DJ. Well, Nolan was on that list. He has six. Dickerson at second, Morneau at first. Arenado, ground ball to second, fly ball to center, and a deep drive to center that worked as a sack fly. Rockies up five to three. They've out hit the Diamondbacks ten to six. 0 and 1. Getting the, the fastball. The first one was in too much. That one was in a better hitter's spot. It might go slider away. Well, it's set back inside. Fastball and it's bounced foul. And he tried to pitch Nolan inside when he hit the sack fly to center, so he knows how to handle that pitch. And that's down the line, and it's going to tail out of play. Nolan hitting 333 against right handed pitching coming in. One of the toughest guys in baseball to strike out. The toughest guys in this game enter in Ciarte. You think about those other guys, more of uh, leadoff types, They're hitting second in the lineups. And Marshall does indeed strike out Arenado. The Rockies will leave two on in the seventh inning. They continue to lead five to three. Stretch time in Arizona.
by Keith Duggar, the Rockies trainer. See, if you're a trainer, you, you double up as the glove guy. You can fix glove gloves. You can fix some, uh, you know, masks if necessary. Shin guards. That's what happened to the mask. Uh, down in the minor leagues, you're also traveling secretary. You're everything. That just ball caught the that piece of the mask. So that way. What they did is Doogie's going to continue to work on it. They just took it off, and now he'll fix it and maybe get it back to him next half inning. Depending on how he calls how this in. <laughs> Ender and Ciarte, A.J. Pollock, Paul Goldschmidt, one, two, and three against Brooks Brown here in the seventh inning. So it'll be a... Second inning for Brooks. He had to come in one pitch into the sixth inning when Tyler Matzik called the trainer out, Keith Duggar, and, and Walt Weiss, and said his hamstring cramped up. Brown gave up a run last inning, and he induces a pop up here left side. Nolan's got it, one out. Well, the Rockies and Diamondbacks at it again tomorrow in game two. Our coverage begins at 7 on Root Sports with the pregame show. You're home for Rockies baseball all season long. Three night games, Thursday a day off in San Diego. And then the Rockies will take on the Padres over the weekend out west. Pollock, uh, an RBI infield single despite a great play by D.J. LeMayhew, and that's a strike. Bang, bang at first. It was reviewed. The safe call was upheld. One and one. Rafael well, sure. Betancourt's gotten up for the Rockies. Well, yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I, I'm sure that Walt is hoping that Brooks can get through this inning. He's the pitcher spots do a fourth next inning, and then that way Raphael could start with a clean inning in the eighth. Change up on the corner, one and two. There's Rafi. did well just to get a piece of that talked about earlier the fact that Chris Owings was a supplemental number one in the 2009 draft for Arizona their first round pick in 09 was AJ Pollock out of Notre Dame Two and two. Pollock not only led the Irish three times in hitting, he was a first team all Big East performer three times, but at a couple different positions as an outfielder twice. But also, did you know this? He was a third baseman in college for a while. I didn't, but I, I like his actions in center field. He's got good speed, he gets very good jumps on the ball. Strong arm, you just see it just profiles if you're scouting him better as an outfielder than a third baseman. Now it's three and two. Goldschmidt's on deck. We don't want him coming up as a tying run. Well, then maybe that's why if, if he gets on, the Rafi is warming up to come in and then face Goldschmidt with the runner on. Ground ball. And <laughs> what a pickup by Nolan. Cut it out. You can't do that every night. It's unbelievable. But we get the pleasure of watching it every night. Tell us how hard uh, that was to pick well, that hop up. I mean, really, words aren't even going to describe how hard it is. But he makes it look so easy. And then not only that to pick it, okay, but then to spin and make a throw on the money. A couple days ago, we did a, a piece on the pregame show. And I was telling about breaking down 
a throw after you catch it and you spin when you pop that head around the most difficult thing is to try to find the first baseman and nolan does it every time and makes it look easy change up swung on and missed it is remarkable well think about this i mean pollock has a hit tonight but he can easily be 0 for 4 because of that play that dj made up the middle and now the play from nolan well you can point to every infielder tonight who's made a well above average if not sensational play i mean that's an in-between hop it's past you that's a terrific play troy came in on a you know a, a two bouncer by enciarte who can fly and had to make a great running throw on the move and just did get in Ciarte. DJ, that sensational play up the middle, and he was called safe at first, was Pollock. And how about the smash that was fielded <laughs> by Morno? See ya. What and a Goldschmidt's gone, turns into a 1 2 3 inning. Brown got a pick me up from Arenado. We're on to the eighth. Worth the price of admission by himself. 5 3. Mike Winters had a good inning, and Doogie's going to finish fix, the project. I'll fix the mask for you. No, just kidding, but you're right. The, the trainers can they can fix gloves, mask. Sometimes they work on egos. Well, they're like a confessional too. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll say some stuff to the trainer that you. Need to just get off your chest. Cargo against Devin Marshall. He's walked twice in the game, 0 for 1, and he has a base hit down the left field line and see if Cargo can get two out of this. He's going to have to hold it first. Good job defensively by Enciarte. He's that plus speed on defense paying off for Enciarte. So Cargo a lead single the other way. And much like Troy, the shift is on. I mean, you only have the shortstop at a shortstop position but he is in kind of thinking maybe he might bunt he shoots the ball to left field and Enciarte one hops back in well, boy is that nice to see from cargo couple walks tonight and then a bullet to left well the Rockies the last three innings have had the leadoff man on they got a run two innings ago yet yeah, last inning they had the first two guys on but did not score. Troy bounced into that double play. See if they can build a run here. Up five to three. McHenry, LeMahieu, and then we'll get a pinch hitter. Uh, the only guy that the uh, D-backs have up now is Ziggler, their sidearm. 
pitches. So you're looking at Descalso or a Noah to pinch hit. And year in and year out, he seems to be their most effective guy. One of the true submarine type pitchers that are they're still out there. Ball and a strike on McHenry. One one runner going and it's fouled off cargo took off looked like a. Hit and run. Well, we can spend Mother's Day at the ballpark on Sunday May 10th get a family photo taken by the team photographer right on Coors Field visit Rockies.com slash mom to purchase a special ticket package for your on field photo. And a happy Mother's Day on May 10th. Mother's Day's photo package. Ground ball to third. There's one and out at first. Two outs. Nobody on for LeMayhew. Double double place tonight for Tomas. This one is an easier one than the last one he had. See Evan Marshall's going to be happy about it. DJ a single. He grounded into a four-six-three double play and a walk. Well, a couple good things tonight through seven plus innings. The Rockies after struggling against the formidable L.A. pitching staff. Back to swinging the bats well on the road. Five runs, 11 hits tonight. I thought it was also key to get it to that early lead. You know, that, 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 that big home run from Justin Morneau in the first just to kind of set the, the tone of the evening. You know, he goes out there, throw up the three spot. Tyler comes back and he's he's very efficient. The yeah, first couple of innings, I thought were the best two innings maybe we've seen Matson throw all year. Yeah, and then he started to wobble some in the fourth and in the fifth, but he still only gave up the two runs in the fifth. But it started with the leadoff walk. Right, his, fir his first two innings, he had the best fastball yes. command clearly Down in the of the zone. year. So Tyler went five innings, couple runs, five hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and he's on the plus side. One, two, two and two on DJ. Also has come to the on deck circle. And now it's a full count. Those are the calls you you get when you're hitting 422. No is down. Out of the zone. I've seen some umpires ring guys up on that one. This is chopped towards second. On the move is Owings, and it turns into a 1 2 3 inning for Evan Marshall. So we move to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Rockies five and the Diamondbacks three.
fitting. It'll be four, five, and six. Trumbo Tomas Owings against Rafael Betancourt. Rafael for the tenth time this year. Ten strikeouts, one walk. That has been a staple of his outstanding career. A lot of strikeouts and very, very, very few walks. Also has 58 saves in his career for the Rock. He's had one earlier this year. Now he's back into that eighth inning role with Adam out of there. Also has the sixth highest whiff percentage on a fastball in the, in the National League at 28.6 percent. Rawls Chapman's number one, of course. That doesn't surprise no. you. Probably surprises some people with Raffy, who throws more 90-91, but he hides that fastball so well. And if you're wondering what the National League average is, 16.1 percent. Whiff percentage. Whiff percentage, yes. Trumbo lines this to deep center field, and Blackman has to play it off the wall. It's a double for Trumbo, his second double of the night. Just the second extra base hit tonight for Arizona. He has both of them. Charlie giving a look up at the big screen, big board. Not too much of the plate. Rafi wanted that ball down and it came back. Center cut. On top of the padding. And center Charlie catches it bare hands and fires it in. Yasmani Tomas, 0 for 2 in a walk, scored in the sixth inning. Started in Reno this year. Called up when Jake Lamb went on the disabled list. Talking to some scouts today, wondering about Tomas and his swing. They said, looks like he's trying to stay inside the ball that hits the ball to right field more than they, they anticipated he would. And that's okay for a guy, you know, like a DJ LeMay, who yes. you, you're not expecting to hit a ton of home runs, but Tomas was signed to a $68.5 million deal because they thought he was going to hit a bunch of home runs. Now, listen, he's a kid still at the big league level. He may, in turn, be that power hitter one day, but right now... It's more that's, of an inside that, out. Yeah, that's been the book on him. A little more inside out than they figured. You know, with, with the young men who played in Cuba... You may have caught a glimpse in the World Baseball Classic, but the reports that not nearly as comprehensive no. as you'd get well, the, with most other young players elsewhere. And the competition day in and day out. Ground ball, Morneau grabs it. Betancourt will get to the bag. Good job by Morneau. When that ball was hit, you were worried about it taking that huge hop and going into the outfield. And also a good job by Bedcourt to, to break to the back. So there was no no hesitation. High chopper off the the plate. Bedcourt immediately sprints over, eyeballing, cuts the back, steps with it on his right foot, gets the ball out of his glove and checks the runner. Chris Owings one for three. With one out. Rockies with a two-run lead will play the infield back naturally. Where's oh, that? I don't Where know. Where is that? Well, I guess just below the <laughs> knees, according to the Ford strike zone. We apologize, Mike Winters.
Good heater, one ball, one strike. Boone Logan in the Rockies pen. And Michael just could not get on the same wavelength. Shook off four times. One and two. And now, if you're Raphael, you're going to really try to hunt that strikeout. There's most balls in play not all but most balls in play will probably produce a run here and make it a one run game so if you get that second out without getting it in play it'd be huge one and two on Owens in the air shallow center field Charlie's got it and Trumbo will have to stop and bluff a throw that's all good job by Betancourt didn't get the strikeout, no. but he got the shallow pop up. But two things happened there. You're talking about pop up priority. As DJ was going back to the ball, he had called for it. You'll see his arm go out saying, I've got it, but his momentum is going away from home. See, he put his arms up. And then the other thing that happened is Charlie called it, said, I've got it because he has a better throwing angle than Carlos does. Because Carlos would have had to catch it, turn his body more to make the throw. Great description of that. The right guy made the play. And so now you have a chance to get out of it. Tuffy goes, which 0 for 2. And he's walked in the game, and he takes a strike. See the evolution of a pitcher who's closing in on 40 with his arsenal. It used to be. 90% fastball start him out of the breaking ball. Well, and you have a you have a younger player big league wise at the plate. Good fastball and it's 0 and 2 on Gozwich. Now he doesn't know what's coming. Tough he's a well he threw me a curveball, then he blew the fastball by me. And that was tardy. What's it gonna be? Oh and two. Everybody Five three Rockies. Trumbo at third with two outs. We're in the eighth. With the open stands for Tuffy, he's looking for the ball in. So if you can pitch him away, you'll get him. Well, that was a changeup. Down and in. One, two. Breaking ball to Troy. Oh, wow. Had English on it. It went right through his legs. And it's now 5 4. Second error of the season on Tulowitzki. And both of them have been the same. Both of them have gone underneath the glove. Well, you're 
right, Drew. This did have English on it, but he sat back. So he got his hands back deep underneath him. Did get him out in front. You're not going to see this too often. Pulled the glove up. Ball goes underneath. Nick Ahmed. Strike one. Two strike count. This is where Rafi has to pick up his his teammate. Said, okay, you pick me up before with good plays. I got you. Made an error, no problem. I'll get this guy. And he did. So Betancourt. Strikes out a bad to end the inning. A rare error on Tulowitzki cost the Rockies a run. It's five fours. We go to the ninth. Southwest.com and by Mike Shaw Subaru. Always our lowest price in sales and service guaranteed. 5 4 ball game as we go to the top of the ninth inning. And we also take you back to our Root Sports studios in Denver. Here's Jenny and Corey. Jenny, thank you very much. Some changes to tell you about for Arizona. Cliff Pennington has come in the ball game at shortstop, and on the hill is the sidewander we saw warming up last inning, Brad Ziegler. And the Rockies will go to Daniel Descalso here in the pitcher spot. Well, it's nice for Daniel knowing. How this inning was going to play out, that he's going to get the sidearm guy. It doesn't matter, but it's better for the lefty to hit off a of Ziggler than the right hander. One pitch, one out, and that'll bring up Blackman. Ziggler's been really good. His velocity is down a little bit, but I mean, look well, at those numbers. Righties don't have a hit, and lefties barely have anything going against him. He had offseason micro fracture surgery on his knee. On his left knee. That's, that's never good. That's where they go poke holes in the bone to try to get some, some regrowth. And it's always a, a lengthy process to come back from. And 
Charlie takes a strike, so it's one and one. John Axford naturally getting loose in the Rockies bullpen again. He'll be the closer most nights. In the absence of Adam Adovino, placed earlier today on the disabled list with a tricep strain. We may have more information in the postgame. This ball's line foul. See if they had the results from that MRI and perhaps Walt in the postgame will uh, let everybody know exactly what those results were. No guarantees. But uh, if not the Toyota postgame show, we'll certainly have them tomorrow for you. One and two. Not only Walt and everybody, I know Adam's anxious to get the results. These are always the, the you're waiting and you're waiting, and you don't have to wait as long as you know, if you just went to the regular doctor and, and the, have to wait the week or ten days or whatever it takes to so get these out and read quickly. Two outs, nobody on. Dickerson coming up. Axford in the bottom of the ninth. We'll see Pennington, Enciarte, and Pollock. If there were to be another hitter in the ninth inning, it would be Paul Goldschmidt. Let's just don't get to him. I agree. Rockies a couple opportunities the last uh, two innings to add on at an insurance run and were unable to do so five runs 11 hits the Rockies have that one error which is big and that it allowed that run that fourth run four runs seven hits no errors for Arizona. Arizona and Colorado came in two and three on defense in the National League in the early going. And another ground ball. So Ziegler does what he's been doing, getting ground balls. One, two, three, top of the ninth. The Rockies looking for three more outs from John Axford up five to four as we go to the bottom of the ninth in Arizona. and try to close it. A reminder, if you want tacos, follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more runs. Now to John Axford. It'll be his fifth appearance. He's two for two in save opportunities. He is uh, very accustomed to pitching in this situation in his career. Well, uh, 118 career saves. Remember back in 2011, led the National League with 46 saves. 10 last year with Cleveland, so this isn't uh, new to John to have that 
for Walt is, is comforting. Out in center field on the double switch, you're going to have Deuce Stubbs go to center. Charlie Blackman will move to left field. So Pennington, the switch hitter, steps in. Three for 13 this year from the left side of the plate. One for one in his career against John. And the fastball darts low, ball one. Two starting pitchers tonight, Tyler Matzik, Chase Anderson, the pitchers of record. Shift is on, and there's a strike, 94, one and one. Good pitch, one and two. Well, we were talking about working at the bottom of the zone, the first three pitches have been there. Tough to get beat that where he's pitching. Two and two, he went curveball. Got him with a high fastball, one out in the ninth. Well, that's how you change the eye level. Maybe unintentional, but it worked nonetheless. They had gone down, down, and then went up out of the zone. That's not where he wanted to, to throw that pitch, but it was effective. So hard to stay off that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you're, you're telling yourself as it's coming in, that's a great pitch to hit. Looks good. Your eyes light up until you swing through it and you're walking back to the dugout. But and good for John. And Ciarte flashes a bluff at a bunt and it's way inside 1 and 0. That's all that was. Even with the bag, perhaps a half step in front of it is Arenado at third. And Ciarte can really run. And that's at the top of the zone, one and one. Michael hooded that pitch. He, he caught the ball on top and had his glove above the baseball. Well received. Great curveball. That's the one you just. Think about rolling across the kitchen table, watch it fall off. Nope, not hitting it. <laughs> that thing dropped, literally yeah. dropped about two and a half feet. That's what I'm saying. Just roll it across the table, watch it fall to the floor. Now it's Yart. They don't know what to look for. One and two. So many guys who throw in the mid 90s like Axford complement that with, with it's hard, hard. It's, it's that and a slider. Yeah, this is the hard fastball and even more with the curveball. It's down in the 70s. By the time he reacted, it was by him. Check swing foul ball at 95. And then think to the curveball at 77. Pitching is about disrupting the timing of the hitter. Just low. Back on April 1st, John turned 32.
2 2. And now it's 3 and 2. Axford, a native of Ontario in Canada. Went to school at Canisius in Buffalo and then on to Notre Dame. Like the guy on deck, A.J. Pollock, 3-2. Ground ball toward the hole and on through a base hit. So the tying run with one out at first in Enciarte who can run. And before that last pitch, Enciarte choked up on the back. It was about an inch, inch and a half off the, the end to help him with some bat control and bat speed. Allowing him, see, look how far he is up uh, off the, the end of the bat. I mean, you just don't see that anymore. Guys with two strikes choking up. You used to hear it all the time in Little League. A.J. Pollock. Enciarte has good speed. He's a good base runner. Chip Hale's a pretty aggressive manager. Meaning that he is probably giving Enciarte the green light to go if he gets the jump. There's a called strike on Pollock. One for four tonight. And again, well received by That's McHenry. He stole he stole yeah. a borderline pitch there. And, and catchers can steal some pitches for a pitcher. Conversely, they can take some away. Jerry Weinstein, Rockies. Roving catching instructor used to call those stra balls. <laughs> Instead of being a strike, it became a ball. That was a Barite strike. Barite? Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is, it's 0 1. One and one on Pollock. Those last three outs, never easy. One out, one on. Rockies clinging to a one-run lead. Goldschmidt on deck. So Those many are the catchers. ones, either, either right there or down by the by the jaw. How many catchers have suffered concussions? Oh, the manager of the Cardinals, Mike Matheny. Ended his career, yes. ultimately. One and two. See if Enciarte's going here. Nope. Two and two. Thought maybe breaking ball count. I was with you. I thought he might run there. And this hole at bat for A.J. Pollock. Thinking that he was going to go at some point. has pretty good speed so yeah if it's it where you have to move side to side it's gonna be a tougher to to double him up even hitting from the right side we just had a shot of Paul Goldsmith you don't want him coming up to the plate with the game on the line so end it now get the double play and be done with it 2-2 two, two. 
Pollock fouls back to fastball. Here's another 2 2. Pollock's fouled off a fastball. He's fouled off a slider. Ground ball slowly hit the second. DJ will get the lead runner. That's all. Good job by LeMayhew making sure he got Enciarte. So they're two outs. Pollock at first now. Goldschmidt at the plate. Off the end of the bat, DJ knew he was only going to probably be able to get the lead runner. And so what did he do? He made sure that the throw was perfect on the money so Troy could come off and get out of there. So Paul Goldschmidt, two for four tonight, 0 for four in his career against John Axford. One of the most dangerous hitters in the National League. 5 4 Colorado. The outfielders have moved back. Carlos Gonzalez playing the no doubles in right as well as in center and left. You know, Paul has good power to all fields. Fouled off, out of play, 0-1. Pollock has five home runs this year. The Diamondbacks is a club. Or, excuse me, Goldschmidt has Pollock at first. Goldschmidt has five home runs this year. As a club, the Diamondbacks have 11. There's 44% of the home runs for Arizona. Oh what? Boy, he fooled him badly. And I think some of that was in how long he took to deliver the baseball. He kind of froze Goldschmidt. Locked up, and then by the swing, he also was not committed to it. Oh and two on Goldschmidt with two outs in the ninth. Line drive, base hit to right. Pollock's going to go first to third. And that'll bring up Mark Trumba. That fastball got a little too much of the plate, given the count. One for Goldsmith. He's a big guy, six foot five. He's punched it to right. Oh, that came back. That's what happened. It came back to, to catch the middle. He wanted it to cut away, and he didn't. He put it into right field. Trumbo tonight, two doubles, and three at bats, also a walk. And if he takes off, you're not going to throw to second base. You'll just eat it if you're Michael McHenry. Ground ball toward the hole, cut off by Arenado on the move, ball game over. And Axford gets the save as the Rockies prevail 5-4 to four over Arizona. Great start to this road trip. Never easy getting those last three outs. A little bit nerve-wracking. 
Trumbo's been swinging the bat well this evening. Hit it on the ground to Nolan Arenado. Ball game over. Rockies win it 5-4 to four to improve to 11-8. Arizona falls to 8-11. and 11. Tyler Matzik, his second victory of the year. Chase Anderson takes the loss. Time for our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Brought to you by our friends at Jimmy John's. First inning, two on. Justin Morneau leaves the building. Three-run home run, his second of the year, 240th of his terrific career. And the Rockies were off to a flying start. That's our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Rockies win it tonight, 5-4, to four, down in Phoenix. Always good to see smiles and high fives afterwards. Let's go to our Root Sports Studios and Jenny Kavner. Jenny, take it away.